Sam. And we're going to go ahead and start with a roll call. Here. Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation by Luis. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Dear God, we commit this working day to you. You have entrusted us as ambassadors of your word. Please guide us as we carry out your work. We seek you first in all we do. We give you our residents, our leadership, our customers, our workforce, and our business. Let us always be mindful of their service. We confess that we are nothing without you and trust in you completely. Amen. We go, we're going to go to item uh, two, the director's administrative report. <coughs> and we're going to start with line, item A. Crossings and Revenues Report for April 2021. Good afternoon, board members, uh, chairman, city officials. For the record, Fred Brown, Director of Operations at the Park Bridge. I'd like to present the Crossings and Revenues for the month of April, fiscal year 2020-2021 compared to 2019-2020. On page number three, we have the uh, car crossings. These are cars that are traveling from the U.S to Mexico through the Far Bridge. For the month of April, we crossed a total of 40,742 crossings. Uh, we show an increase of 20,951, or an increase of 105% for the month of April. Also, I'd like to present uh, other crossings from other ports of entry. For the month of April, we have uh, in Brownsville, Gateway, an increase of 41,029 cars. Veteran, Los Tomates, an increase of 56,041. Free trade Los Indios, an increase of 13,014 cars. Combination of all three bridges, an increase of 110,084 10, 110, cars, which represent an increase of 123%. Sorry. Eagle Pass, 72,656, an increase of 76%. Laredo Bridge, an increase of 110,868, 75%. Macarena Hidalgo, an increase of 65,086 cars, 80%. As of those bridge, they had an increase of 40,160, an increase of 179%. A combination of both bridges, uh, an increase of 105,246 cars, which represents an increase of 102%. Progresso Bridge, they had an increase of 23,900 cars, which represents an increase of 121.63%. Lana Bridge, they had an increase of 14,338 crossings, which represents an increase of 74.18%. And then again, the Far Bridge, we had an increase of 20,951 uh, cars, which represents an increase of 105.86%. This is for the month of April on cars. And on page number four, we have the, the uh, truck crossing. These are trucks that are driving from the U.S. to Mexico through the Far Bridge. We have a total of 58,398 uh, trucks, which represents an increase of 14,242 crossings or an increase of 32.25% for the month of April. Also, I'd like to present the other crossings from other ports of entry on trucks. We have uh, Berro Los Tomates, an increase of 7,829, an increase of 63%. Free Trade Los Indios, an increase of 855 trucks, 92%. A combination of both bridges, an increase of 8,684 crossings, which represents an increase of 
Eagle Pass, they had an increase of 4,511 truck, which represents an increase of 41%. Laredo Bridge, they had an increase of 62,610 crossings, which represents an increase of 42%. Dufar Bridge, we have an increase of 14,242 crossings, which represents an increase of 32%. Progreso Bridge, they have an increase of 432 crossings, 10% increase. And the Anza Dulles Bridge, they had an increase of 712 crossings, which represents an increase of 72%. Again, these are the crossings for the month of April. As you see, all uh, cars and trucks, they had an increase. Again, it's uh, compared to last year, fiscal year 2019, 2020, due to the pandemic, now starting to, uh, this year, to increase the crossings. On page number five, we have the northbound. These are trucks that are traveling uh, through the far bridge from Mexico to the U.S. Total crossings, 60,197 crossings. Uh, which represents an increase of 16,048 trucks or an increase of 36.35%. As well, on the agriculture side, the FAR International Bridge total 17,915 crossings for the month of April, representing 30% of the imports that are coming from Mexico to the U.S. through the FAR Bridge. Now, on the agriculture side as well, the FAR International Bridge showed an increase of 1,059 more crossings compared to last year's same month or an increase of 6.28% uh, in increase. <coughs> On page number six, we have the total combination of uh, southbound and northbound crossings. For the month of April, these are cross the trucks that are crossing into Mexico, coming from Mexico to the U.S., a combination of both compared to last year. We had, we had a total crossing of 118,595 crossings, which represents an increase of 17,950, or an increase of 17.83%. Last page, we have page number seven. We have the revenue, total revenue collected for the month of April. April we collected a total of $1,342,469, which represents an increase of $334,446, or an increase of 33.18%. Uh, total collection on the seven-month period from October to April, we collected a total of $9,585,534, which represents an increase of $1,142,231 or an increase of 13.53%. Chairman, board members, this concludes my reports. Again, it's uh, from the fiscal year 2020 to 2021, this is uh, the best month ever uh, for, the, for, the, for the fiscal year. Again, it was a very, very good month, both in crossings and in revenues. Do we have any questions? Uh, what kind of trucks are you seeing the increase of crossings? Again, it's uh, overall, uh, yeah. again, we had 1,095 on perishables. Uh, yes. and, and then we also been, we have seen the, the, uh, the increase on, on gas and oil. Yes, sir. We have seen an increase on, on maquila products as well. Is overall on the whole. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make it quick. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. <clears throat> we'll uh, go to the line item D, which is finance report for April 2021. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, city administrators, for the record, Luis Bassan, bridge director. We do have Carla Saavedra, uh, city finance director. Uh, if there are any specific questions regarding the bridge budget. Just a quick report. Uh, so finances are tracking well for the bridge. Uh, currently we're at 79% of our revenue side. So that leaves us with about 21% remaining of the, of the budget uh, from here to the end of the fiscal year. So we're doing well. And on the expenditure side, we're at 84% of our budget. Uh, leaving us with 16% remaining. Uh, we did have our budget kickoff on May the 7th, as I mentioned during last month. Uh, that went very well. That's basically an internal process. So basically budget, new budget season is in session and we're working towards submitting our budget steps between June 7th and June the 14th. So we're working closely internally, but we're also working closely with the finance director and some of the other directors that oversee certain budget items like capital outlay, fleet, you know, garage, things of that nature. And as I mentioned last time, uh, some of the things that we're gonna be looking at uh, for this coming year, some of the big ticket items are like capital outlay, marketing, the travel, the contract contractual agreements, and uh, emergency repairs, things of that nature, mostly on, on improvements to the site, site improvements. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Make sure what report you're looking at. Because the one the, the, late, the report from April, end right. of April. So I guess budget-wise, the revenues are 64%. We're still higher. So the target is 58%. So the revenues are at 64, 64%. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just talking about overall on the expen on the revenue side, we're s almost 80% usage, so we got about 20, 21% remaining. Right, but that's, that's what I want to clarify, because in the report I'm showing, the report that is in the packet, that the revenues are within 64% of the budget, and Correct. the expenditures are at 40%. So just, just to sure. clarify sure. that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay, any other questions regarding the budget? It ends in September, yeah, September 30th. So 1st of October is our start of the new fiscal year. If you have any other questions, we'll go to the director's report. Okay. Yeah, so on the director's report, I have a couple of items here. So one of them, uh, as we all know, uh, travel restrictions for non-essential travel from Mexico has been extended another 30 days through June 21st <coughs> of, of this year. So we'll see how that goes. Again, this is... Uh, you know, coupled with, with everything that's going on with the COVID, with the pandemic, and uh, some other issues that are out there, uh, we need to obviously keep, keep the country safe and that these are the measures that the federal government takes on both ends to ensure that, uh, that this uh, continues to take place. Uh, one of the things that, that I wanted to talk about, you know, some of the high level meetings, as, as, as Ezequiel mentioned last meeting, uh, with regards to the presidential permit amendment for the for the bridge expansion, it's taken a lot of work. We've been working at this in Mexico since, uh, like I said, for about 14, 15 months. Since 2019, we actually started working on that. We had some high-level meetings over there with our core group, or our Grupo Base, as we call it. So one of the things that, that took place this year uh, that we've never done before is we invited these folks to come and vi actually visit visit the bridge. So just so we have some highlights here of some high-level visits. So we had the Texas Secretary of State visit back on April the 28th. Uh, uh, as you may know or may not know, uh, I'm also on the BTAC, on the Border Trade Advisory Committee, along with Cynthia Garza from the city. And uh, we oversaw the, the actual border trade, uh, the actual uh, transportation master plan for me Texas Mexico border. So she was here to talk about that, and she was also here to talk to the mayor about the Texas state permit, which is something that uh, we started looking at this year because it was something that came uh, by way of TxDOT, uh, which our legislative uh, team is also working on to ensure that we don't have to go through that process. Uh, so I'll get you more information on that later uh, at next month. But for the meantime, I just wanted to kind of show you some of these high-level visits we've had at the bridge recently. The next one which with S was with uh, SARE, which is basically the consulate at the national level, Secretaría de Relaciones Exteriores, and they are the, really the ones that oversee the binational process. Uh, they are the ones that, just like on, on our side, the U.S. Department of State at the national level dictates to us whether we move forward with projects or not. Uh, this, is, this is them on the Mexico side. So basically our consulate of Mexico and McAllen invited them over. Uh, we had been coordinating with him and the, 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 the gentleman that's responsible for all your border-related matters. And uh, we, were, we welcomed Mr. Galvez to, to, uh, to the bridge here back on May the 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then the next one, which is the one we just had last week, this is the big one. So this is, you know, you have your two uh, core individuals for SST, which is our project sponsor in Mexico for the bridge expansion, and then you have Banobras. This is the funding mechanism or the funding bank at the federal at the federal level. For for months and months, we had been pressuring Banobras uh, to give us some type of a letter of guarantee uh, for the funding to take place to be appropriated for the project in Mexico, and this is basically that meeting. So they came out here, they had already uh, sent us something in writing, but they wanted to ensure that the mayor uh, understood, that the leadership understood what they were working on. And as the mayor said, you know, these are processes. Just like in the U.S., there's a lot of legwork that takes place, a lot of challenges along the way, a lot of obstacles to get funding appropriated for projects. The same applies in Mexico. More so now because this is such a high-level project and the fact that the federal government in Mexico will be funding their side or their, their part of it, their share. So great, uh, exciting times for us because again, you know, uh, to have these folks all under one roof, all at the same time on U.S. territory, coming in from Mexico, that, that's a that's a big deal. So it was it was greatly appreciated, and we're following through. We're following up with them 
to ensure that we continue to be on the same page and that we finalize those designs for the bridge expansion by the end of this year, the latest February. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll let you know that on, uh, when was it? On Monday during the city commission meeting, uh, the city commission approved phase four uh, with our engineers, consultants in Mexico. That is the final leg of this process to get us from conceptual design to final design and get us shovel ready to start construction early in 2022. So again, very, very excited to have these, these groups here. Uh, another thing that I wanted to discuss was the DAP 15 project. One of the things that we brought up last time was that we wanted to showcase you some pictures. I know that it's hard for, for everybody to get out there and see what's going on. Uh, we can see it through drone footage, we can see it through pictures, but Omar also has a presentation that he provided and you could really get a good idea of the magnitude of this project. Even though the DAP 15 project is only two commercial entry lanes and boots and two exits and their corresponding boots, it's a big project. So here are some of the pictures. As you can see, that's where the two new lanes are gonna be constructed. They actually threw some, um, some, uh, some black top on there. And then on top of that, they were starting to pour the concrete. So with that, I'll, ta I'll leave it to Omar because he's got another presentation with some, with some great pictures and some slides. Just a little bit of the, uh, the project uh, summary. It's a $7.4 million project. Estimated completion is March of 2022. That was the time, uh, it was about 500 uh, working days. Uh, they're about 17% complete, but that's gonna pick up because a lot of the early stuff you know, takes a lot of time. And now that they're already starting to build the lanes, you're gonna see that dollar amount go up. So it should catch up to the, to the time completion. So. And then you can move to the next slide. That's just the overall, uh, what the project looks like. We're adding the two new lanes and then the second uh, DSIF exit over to the, on the north side. And then next slide. And this is just the area, I know uh, Luis had some pictures. This is the bond breaker. It's, a, it's an asphalt layer that get, gets uh, poured before you pour the concrete that prevents cracking of the concrete. So it helps, uh, it prevents any cracking. So it's about two inches of asphalt and then you get the, the concrete. Next slide. And this, these are just some aerial shots. You can see the limits, <coughs> the fencing where that got constructed. And then next slide. And then you can see where the two new boots are gonna be. So they've already started prepping the foundation for the, the two new boots. Okay. And those are just some slides. Thank you. So again, a lot of progress. Yeah, we've, we're having some weather delays, obviously, with all this rain. You know, in, within a week, we've had three torrential rainfalls. Uh, which is not good, but uh, at the end of the day, we continue to move forward. Uh, this project will be complete by February of next year, uh, and we're hoping to get that open along with the BSIF connector. Obviously, it's gonna take some, <laughs> some working with, with TxDOT to ensure that they are operational within the border safety inspection facility. It's one thing to open up that exit lane, and it's another thing for them to be operational, so we have to ensure that. And specifically also for the white loads. They were supposed to build a white load lane inside the BSIF, so we're working with TxDOT uh, to bring that uh, forward. Uh, but going back a little bit, I know we kind of skipped ahead a little bit to the engineers, part of the engineers report, but one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring uh, up is uh, next, next month, we have three policy items right now that we've been working uh, with our legislative affairs team uh, on the legislative side at the state capitol. And you've probably seen some of the, some of the uh, news releases that have gone out. I'm not gonna get into details. Uh, we're gonna bring in the experts. So I was talking to Cynthia Garza, the one responsible, and she'll be here uh, next month to ensure that she gives a full update on that. Uh, so basically what it is, you know, she's gonna be making sure that all the items are signed into law and it's specifically also for Rider 11B funding that it's signed into the budget. So once all that gets squared away and everything makes it out of the, the appropriate chambers, then she'll be able to come in and give you an update on that. But there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of legwork. They've been at the state capitol, I think for the last two, three weeks, you know, con uh, lobbying, lobbying to ensure that, uh, that uh, they're listening to the needs of the trade and the, the trade that we represent in FAR. Uh, we need these things. We wouldn't be asking for them if we didn't need them, right? Um, with that, you know, the trade numbers, uh, Fred kind of 
touched upon a, li a little bit on the on the on the on the trade. Uh, you know what commodities we're crossing. Yes, so uh, we we you know we continue to set the bar for oil and gas on the export side. As a matter of fact, that was one of our biggest exports uh, in 2020, and now it's picking up back again. And that's why we saw also historical crossings uh, going southbound. But with that. Uh, this just came out hot off the press. So just today we got this delivered. This is the new trade numbers book and the brochure. This year we decided to go for the brochure in Spanish only uh, based on, on user feedback from last year. And the book continues to be both in English and in Spanish. So we didn't have enough copies. They only sent us three copies. Uh, but the whole shipment should be here Friday if the weather permits, if not until Monday. Is it? Oh, okay, so <laughs> there it goes, half and half, <laughs> half and half. But the good thing is, again, you know, we continue to move forward with World, with World City. So this is something we've been doing for many years. Thank you for allowing us to continue with this publication because, again, this allows us to really, you know, this is basically our market profile. This allows us to really uh, set the bar higher for us uh, to ensure that we're looking at other, at, at the, the trade patterns, what's going on, uh, not just in other land ports of entry, uh, we're seeing a lot of intermodal stuff, so it's, it also puts us on the same map uh, with land, p with seaports and airports, and at the same time, you know, allows us to b have our rankings. You know, where do we rank on all these top commodities that we're importing and exporting? So again, we're very proud of this publication, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be handing these out, or so, uh, have, you know, taking you some to your offices and delivering some here in the next few weeks once we get all the, the full shipment. So thank you for that. Things are looking good there. And with that, uh, part of the deal that we have with World City is that uh, for this year, every quarter, uh, we're putting together this FAR trade trends deal. So the next one is going to be focused on oil and gas, and we're bringing in an expert. Uh, this is going to be actually virtual. Virtual. I know the first one, I believe Tony participated in the first one. It was all based on produce. Then we had something else regarding just trade numbers as a whole. Uh, this is going to be our third one, and it's going to be focused on oil and gas. So... Uh, very proud of this new trade trends deal that we're doing with World City, and uh, we're going to continue to move forward with this. And we have some other ideas. As a matter of fact, I was invited to participate in a focus group with World City uh, to find out what else can we do with this with this publication. What, how, how much further can we take it out there? Uh, what other types of programming? You know, having Bridge Connect is a, is a huge help. It's a great platform for us, but uh, we have to start looking elsewhere, and we also have to start experimenting with some other types of programming and, 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 and things of that nature to, to get the word out, just to, again, ensure that everybody's aware, investors, bankers, anybody is aware of, the, of our numbers. Yes. One of the times that we went to Washington, I remember one of the meetings we were, they were talking about how they were planning to um, to continue funding for highways uh -huh. since, uh, you know, most cars were going electric and most of the funding comes from your fuel tax. So if you have cars that are electric, we're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how they were, were going to do that. Obviously, from that year that we were there till now, a lot of things have changed mm -hmm. and a lot of companies have announced that, you know, by a certain day, they're going to be Completely all electric on, on all their lineups, stuff like that. It's happening with, you know, pickup trucks, it's happening with semis. Um, I think maybe getting together something like that okay. would work. You For know, the I'm next one. Also thinking of companies that are coming to set up here in, 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 in the state. Uh, one of the other things that seems interesting to me, and probably to some of the guys that are here, that we're all doing some type of transportation is uh, autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, like, uh, you remember three years ago, that, uh, they implemented e-logs for us. But they gave us an array of uh, companies that were qualified to do it, and you could put it on your truck as an additional item, and it would help you uh, with this. Wondering what mm -hmm. autonomous might look like. Will it be something like that, that they're, because there's different companies providing different services sure. that can just be like an attachment to your truck okay. or a full truck. So, I don't know. Like sure. I said, I don't have all the details, and <laughs> that, that, that might be the reason What's we would want to bring experts, and maybe through the context that uh, you can... Well, as, as you're aware, Mr. Chairman, we're, we've been participating, uh, obviously, throughout the pandemic. We, we were not able to travel, but a lot of the major conferences that we participated in, uh, from United Fresh to even uh, Viva Fresh, uh, the CADEM conferences, uh, and all of these conferences, they, they've been talking about this for quite some time now. 
So we can always take from there. There's always, you know, phenomenal speakers that we run into and that we meet along the way in these conferences. So there's always a way to, to, to you know, connect with them and invite them to participate in something like this. So yeah, it's not yeah it's definitely. It's not only gonna change the way we operate, it's also gonna change sure. what we move, how we move it. And, Absolutely. And, and and the products that are going to And just like there's pros, there's a lot of cons, yes. you know, and nobody wants to get rid of combustible engines, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like, a, I, don't know, I don't care how fast the new Ford F-150 goes, right, the electronic, but <laughs> it's one of those things, right? So yeah, no, definitely, we'll, 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 we'll continue to look at that and, uh, and, and shed some light on some of these issues, and, and you're more than welcome to give us some, some input on that and what we should do for our next one. It's, again, it, this is every quarter, uh, and this is not, this, we're not limiting ourselves to this. You know, this is something we've also uh, started to look at internally. As I mentioned a few months back, uh, I'm starting to look at a program, uh, you know, just cross-checking things, cross-checking the truth about, about trade, you know, uh, ab about freight, things of that nature. And now a lot of these issues that are affecting <coughs> trade, trucking, industry, logistics. So <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to, to grab from and, and take, to, take to, the, to the masses. That's it for the director's report. Again, we did jump a little bit ahead on the engineer's report, but uh, you know, again, all projects are moving forward. Uh, unfortunately, because of the rain, you know, our phase two with our construction for the for the office expansion, it's you know, there's a lot of water there right now. Standing water as of this morning had a lot of rain, but that project continues to move forward, and we're hoping to complete that project here by the end of uh, in the next in the next few months. So we're expanding the parking lot, we're expanding expanding the retention pond. And we're adding some more amenities that that were that were that were needed, uh, you know, increasing our, you know, expanding our fence line, things of that nature. So if you haven't had a chance, I know not everybody has had a chance to go to the bridge. Uh, it'd be great to go see the expansion of that. I was going to actually well. bring back the picture of where you were having your meetings because, uh, I mean, I know. Er, oh er, yes, yes. I, I don't know if everybody has has had a chance to go look at your first mm -hmm. expansion and, mm -hmm. and yeah. the fact that you're already. Utilizing Since we project. haven't really uh, done a, <laughs> a grand opening <laughs> because we're not done with the project yet, but some most have seen it already. Yeah. And basically, you know, we expanded three times the size when it comes to the conference room. So now we have more abilities, we have more more flexibility to divide it into two meetings if we have to, that sort of thing. Technology. And we technology, yeah. Overall, the technology. We appreciate uh, you know being able to do it at the DRC. Uh, DRC. Yeah. But you know, now that you have it in. in and, yeah, and unfortunately, once we get back to normal one day, we're like with Bridge Connect, we were already, you know, averaging 150 people in attendance. You know, it's going to be hard to fit that. I think we can only fit about 80 in here, yeah. uh, classroom style. Uh, so, but again, you know, we're, we're, we've, um, this, was what, this was a much needed expansion. We needed it plus the technology. This has become our new Bridge Connect studio of sorts. Uh, and we're going to continue to use it. I mean, that's, that's what it's for. And there are plans to maybe go upstairs. In the, in the future, there's been talks already, so we'll see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> not not in time. Sure. Let the venues are up. Go a sniper, a sniper <laughs> place, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I've been asked what happened to that big block of glass that we were supposed to build, right? So that was the rendering from a few years back. So we're ho we're hoping we can bring that to you in the trade uh, sometime in the not too distant future. Uh, further along there, um, you know, again, I already mentioned the phase four and the timeline again for the bridge. You know, it's a very aggressive timeline. If we get to if we get to final designs by by beginning of next year, we should be them done with that project with the entire bridge expansion uh, in 14 to 17 months. Uh, so that'll put us at towards the tail end of 2023 uh, to build a second span for the bridge to become fully operational and functional. Um, Plans by the end of this year. On them. Yes, by the end of this year, going into, yeah. Start construction early 2022, yes. Fiscal. Once we go out, yeah. Calendar. Calendar, calendar. yeah, calendar. I wish it was fiscal. Oh, <laughs> anything, you, you want add anything else, Omar, on the, on the project? Yeah, just, just to add on that second span, you know how we did approve Mexico's phase four, you know, we're probably looking to go in July for our final design for our consultants. So and they'll take six months too, so it kind of lines up with by the end of the year, finish up the design. So that's something we'll we'll bring to the city commission for the, the final phase of SCA for the final design. And in the interim, they'll be on the US side, they've been working on the hydraulic studies and they've been working on well, mostly the environmental clearance side of things, which is uh, you know another challenge in itself. 
Um, but at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're, they're coordinating the designs. Um, the good thing is that these are the two engineers, consultants that worked on the original bridge, and obviously SILA and IBWC have to pass that inspection uh, at the water level, at the, at the river level. Uh, but uh, so there's a lot of, there's still a lot of legwork to do, a lot of, a lot of uh, details to take care of, uh, but we're, we, we should be on time and on budget. Plus the border wall too. Plus the border wall, that's another issue, yeah, and the whole levy deal. So yeah, that's another wrench in the system, but it needs to get done, you know, so. <laughs> Correct. All right. Anything else on the engineer's report or any questions? Right. <coughs> we'll go to item three, which is administrative. We need a motion for the approval of the minutes for April 21st, 2021. Mm -hmm. Motion. A motion by Mr. Martinez. Second. Second by Mr. Campero. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Line item B is discussion and action, if any, on Comse Noreste Institutional Sponsorship for 1950. We need a motion for that. I can answer the question. Discussion? Sure, absolutely. So that's why we put it under administrator, just so we can do a quick uh, review on it. So really what this is, as, as you might be aware, we're members of Comse Noreste, which is a, a trade association for exporters coming in from Mexico. They're based out of Monterrey. They, had dif they have different sectors throughout, uh, throughout Mexico. We've been members of Comse for the last two, three years. Uh, and uh, this is our chance to kind of step, step up that game. We just, we just talked to their board of directors here, when was it, uh, a couple of months ago at the beginning of the year. We talked to their, to their board of directors. Um, they're doing a lot of business, Laredo's doing a lot of business with them, so this is our time to get into a sponsorship deal where we're going to have also uh, sessions, seminars, and things of that nature, and they're going to be bringing in some of their trade partners, some of the companies that are exporting uh, through other land ports of entry to look at FAR and to see if this is a good fit for them. And, and plus, this also entails uh, traveling to Monterrey, meeting with these folks, sitting down with them, presenting to them, and promoting our bridge. Uh, as we know, with all this infrastructure and everything that we're putting together, all the uh, you know high dollars that we're putting into uh, to, to the bridge, it's in our best interest to go out there and sell it. So this is a good opportunity for us at, at about two thousand dollars, just with one association. Which one is that? This is for exporters from Mexico coming in. Exportaciones. Mm -hmm. right, it's export for Mexico. Right. Impo importation for us. Second. Second by Mr. Martinez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. And discussion and action on line item C. Discussion and action, if any, on Confederación de Asociaciones de Asociaciones de Agentes Aduanales de la República Mexicana, CAREM, sponsorship for $13,500. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, city administrators. So, CAREM is also one of those associ associations at the at the at the national level. Uh, we have our local branch here, which is what we call Triple A Reynosa, which is the Customs Brokers Association or Reynosa. And we did bring our friend uh, Jesus Barrera to give you more a little bit more of a details and a little bit of a rundown of what we're doing here. But I think some of you are familiar with this program. Uh, we've done it every year for the last three, four years. As a matter of fact, two years ago, we went to the highest level. Uh, that was during their 100-year celebration or 100-year reunion. It's a big convention with anywhere from 800 to 1,000 customs brokers uh, from Mexico and some other parts of the nation. Uh, I think inclu even including Canada, they go to this. Uh, so the, the, the ask for this year is $13,500. But again, I'd like to invite Jesus Barrera to give you a little bit of a more of a, uh, a background on this. And then that's going to tie into uh, D as well. So we'll discuss that here shortly unless you guys have any questions right now. I'm sorry, it's going to be Enrique Lastra. He's a customs broker from Reynosa, and he's part of the association. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Enrique Lastra. I'm a custom broker in the Mexican side for the last 34 years. Right now, I am the treasurer of the As Customs Broker Association here in Reynosa. Uh, I am representing our association here in Reynosa today, and the National Custom Broker Association called CAREM by the Mexican letters. Is everybody comfortable if I talk Spanish so I can be more fluid? Yeah, okay. Desde aproximadamente hace seis años empezamos una relación con lo que es la administración del puente de, de FAR, 
algo que no se había dado en mis anteriores años como agente aduanal. Para que tengan una idea más o menos, eh, la CAREM, que es la, la Asociación Nacional de Agentes Aduanales, se compone de más de 800 agentes aduanales en todo el país. Contamos con 48 asociaciones a nivel local, de, de acuerdo a cada puerto, a cada aeropuerto, a cada eh, puerto fronterizo o aduana interior. Y se componen 48 asociaciones, componen lo que es CAREM. Nosotros aquí a nivel local tenemos la Asociación de Reynosa, en la cual estamos 66 agentes aduanales, 32 adscritos a la aduana de Reynosa y otros 34 que son sucursales de agencias eh, en todo el país. Llámese Nuevo Laredo, Aeropuerto de México, Veracruz y que trabajan aquí por Reynosa. Prácticamente desde que Luis está al frente de, de la directiva del puente de FAR, hemos tenido un acercamiento, hemos hecho una, una muy buena alianza para nosotros en lo que es la parte hacia el norte, nos, en, nos eh, ayudaron en un principio a establecer una relación con CBP, con quien tenemos una magnífica relación hoy, que eso hace que, que trabaje mucho mejor la situación, especialmente con los continuos cambios que hemos tenido en lo que es la parte de autoridades en el lado mexicano. En este lado es mucho más estable las, las personas que están en la, en la, a nivel de autoridad y nos han ayudado también con lo que es autoridades de la ciudad, en este caso con el puente de FAR y con la ciudad de FAR, con lo que es el condado, con eh, Richard Cortés y a nivel estatal también nos han ayudado y a nivel federal. ¿Qué hemos hecho nosotros por, por lo que es el, la directiva del puente de FAR? Hemos, los hemos eh, llevado a lo que es CAREM a nivel nacional, que tenemos entrada a nivel federal con todas las autoridades en, en la Ciudad de México, comunicaciones y transportes, con aduanas, con hacienda, con gobernación, todo lo que donde, donde nos han pedido que, que les ayudemos, hemos estado presentándolos allá y siempre presentados como, como una alianza, tanto lo que es el puente de FAR con lo que es la asociación y la CAREM. Esto nos ha ayudado mucho a ambos, hemos tenido, inclusive eh, yo tuve la suerte de, de acompañarlos a una feria en, en Culiacán, <coughs> promoviendo precisamente cuando empezó todo este proyecto de la carretera de Culiacán a Matamoros, y que nos posesionó en la parte agrícola, siendo la parte más importante del país, la, el área de Culiacán, para todo lo que es la exportación de perecederos, y eh, participar en este tipo de ferias nos ha ayudado a atraer gente que cruzaba por Nogales y que hoy cruza por este puerto, con todo lo que eso ha traído, no solamente en cruces, sino en lo que es infraestructura que se ha establecido en el área principalmente de FAR, de todos esos exportadores y de todas esas compañías que que manejan el perecedero y que se manejaban por Nogales y que hoy están por acá. Eh, pues básicamente, eso es lo que yo venía, venía aquí a platicarles. Esta alianza, la verdad es que ha sido muy provechosa en ambos sentidos. Se los agradecemos a Luis la apertura que ha tenido y pues afortunadamente también nosotros hemos podido ayudar en la parte de, de lo que es la, la entrada de ellos hacia, hacia México. ¿no? La participación en nuestros congresos anuales de Karen, creo que tiene ya cinco años participando como como patrocinadores, con un boot, con un tiempo de exposición ante esos 800 agentes aduanales que asistimos normalmente al, al Congreso, pues nos ha ayudado también a que no solamente los locales aquí, sino otras aduanas, otros agentes aduanales, les interese la plaza y nos promocionen en sus, en sus propias regiones. Pues básicamente sería, sería esto lo que venía yo a comentarles. No sé si hay alguna pregunta o tengan algún… No, pues eh, ante todo agradecerles la, las atenciones que, que han tenido ante Luis y, y su personal y, y, y nosotros y, y sabemos que la, estas alianzas, como platicamos en la Junta el mes pasado, eh, tocante al, al, al nuevo permiso presidencial, no se hubiera logrado sin el apoyo de, de las empresas, las asociaciones locales y, y nacionales para, para poder llegar a, al momento que estamos ahorita y, y se los agradecemos. Sabemos que nos dieron la oportunidad de ser miembros del, del CAREM sin, sin ser agentes aduanales. Así ¿verdad? Es. Fuimos los primeros como puente internacional, lo cual agradecemos y creo que no, no sé si alguien más tenga alguna pregunta. Gracias, Chairman. Gracias. Gracias. I believe Mr. Barrera wants to also say a few words. He's the director for the AAA Reynosa. Muchas gracias este, por la invitación. 
y tenernos aquí saludando a, a ya conocidos, todos ellos. Yo les hago una pequeña remembranza a todos ustedes. Esto no es cuestión de casualidad. Esto realmente es cuestión de un producto de trabajo. La primera vez que se fue invitado el Puente de Fara a participar en nuestro Congreso Nacional. Fue un boom. La presentación primero que ellos hicieron fue algo para todos porque no había nunca en la historia de Karen se había presentado un puente de FAR o un puente del lado americano a exponer un proyecto que realmente impactara. Y por eso digo que no es, no es cosa de casualidad, es cosa del buen funcionamiento que ha hecho el puente de FAR, de los directivos tener esas presentaciones para poder promover este puerto, que realmente eso es lo que nos ha hecho crecer. Año con año ha venido aumentando y realmente en ese congreso que se ve, como dijo el licenciado Lastra, que van muchos agentes aduanales, ahí ven ellos todas las bondades que tiene este puerto. Y una de las bondades más, más interesantes que al menos yo he visto, tuve eh, el bien trabajar en Hacienda, 17 años, me tocó trabajar en un departamento donde visitaba todas las aduanas de la República Mexicana, todas las fronteras, y la verdad nunca había, me, había, me tocó algo como esto, nunca. Por eso digo que no es producto de la casualidad, es producto de un trabajo que está detrás, detrás que ustedes hacen y que ellos, los directivos del puente, impulsan muy fuerte. Y eso nos ha venido a bien que en los congresos todos los agentes aduanales vean este puerto eh, con mucha prioridad. A nosotros nos llega un camión de perecederos a las 5 de la tarde y a las 7 y media, dos horas y media, está cruzando hacia Estados Unidos. ¿Por qué? Porque esa es la gran bondad que representa, pero habría que, había que decírselos en un congreso a los agentes aduanales, y no tanto nosotros los agentes aduanales de Reynosa, sino que realmente la ciudad de FAR, los representantes de FAR, decírselos a ellos cuáles eran las bondades que teníamos aquí. Es por eso que siempre año con año, ahora con la buena relación que tenemos, invitamos al puente de FAR para que vaya y exponga nuestro congreso, porque la verdad, para nosotros, esa es nuestra mayor promoción. Aparte de todo el trabajo que ellos hacen y que nosotros también publicitamos, ese es, ahí es donde está el grueso de todos los agentes aduanales a nivel nacional, que ven con mucha bondad pasar por este puerto. Hoy en día Laredo es un puerto muy grande, lo entendemos, lo sabemos, pero si llega un camión, tarda tres días para cruzar, si llega a las 5 de la tarde. Juárez, si llega un camión a las 5 de la tarde, brinca hasta el otro día. Nogales, lo mismo. Tijuana, lo mismo. Eso es lo que nos hace diferentes a Reynosa Far contra aduanas equiparables a nuestro flujo de, 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 de tráfico. Realmente, y no es casualidad, es realmente es un trabajo que ha estado atrás mucho, 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 muy, muy a huevo. También reconozco la labor de CBP, aquí al oficial Carlos Rodríguez, que nos ha escuchado cada que hemos venido a, 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 este, a platicar con él por medio de, 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 de los directivos y realmente nos ha escuchado, nos hemos puesto de acuerdo en las cosas que realmente a nosotros nos aquejan con todo lo que hay en este rubro del comercio exterior y todas las problemáticas y todo. Ellos también han tenido a ver bien lo que estamos haciendo también en México y es una relación realmente de cooperación para que este puente de FAR sea uno de los puentes más importantes del comercio internacional. Yo les agradezco a todos ustedes, Luis, Fred, Ezequiel, este, señor Carlos, y a todos ustedes les agradezco, la verdad, por todo el apoyo y toda la colaboración que nos han dado. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Carlos. Gracias, Jesús. Y 
Y deja que ven el nuevo video. ¿Eh? Ya sé, ya Como sé. serie de Netflix, ¿eh? Eso sí, sí. Que acá bien enganchados. Pero, no, <risa> se, los, se los agradecemos. Y la, me tocó estar en, esa, uh, en ese evento y la verdad que sí, uh, sentado atrás, viendo que Luis uh, dio su presentación y, y después de ver el video, la, la verdad, la, la reacción fue bastante buena. Bastante por, buena. Por, llamarlo de alguna man, por llamarlo de alguna manera. Así es. Y viene algo mejor, como lo mencionaba. Sí, y, viene, y viene algo mejor. Top secret. Muchas gracias. Uh, we do need a motion for line item C. A motion. Uh, I know. Motion by Mr. Martinez. Second by Mr. Campero. All in favor say aye. 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 Line item D, which is discussion and action, if any, on the association. Asociación de Agentes Aduanales, Reynosa, Sponsorship for Guayaberas, for six times. We also need a motion. A motion. A motion by Mr. Martinez. Yes, we can. We have a playa, pero bueno, no sé cómo se dice. We have a motion by Mr. Martinez, second by Mr. Campero. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We just need a motion to adjourn. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. A motion by Mr. Flores, second by Mr. Hernandez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much. Stay safe out there.